news and notes to the coaches and players for America's team, let us go inside the stars on 105.3 The Fan. Good morning, Metroplex. Shout out to the 6 a.m. club. It's the Hump Day edition. Hump Day. With Sean and Bobby. Choppy is out for the week. And Roberto is our Cowboys insider. We're live on the fan cam, Twitch, and YouTube. We have a ton of NFL notes to get to, but let's start off at the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco for OTA. Yeah, OTA started on Tuesday. Now, they were not open to the media. They will be open today and tomorrow. Uh, so we'll have presence out there. We'll be out there. I know I'll be, I'll definitely be out there for practice tomorrow. I think I'll be out there for locker today. Uh, but we'll be out there the next couple days and taking tabs on things. And one of the guys we knew we weren't going to be able to talk to was CD Lamb because CD at this point is just, he's not showing up for OTAs. It's voluntary stuff. And he's trying to make a point. He will be there for all the mandatory stuff. I think, and I know we talked about it during crosstalk yesterday. I don't think he'll do a hold in at training camp if he doesn't have a contract. I think he's practicing. I don't think he's just showing up and sitting out. Uh, but I think he he clearly Why? wants his, Why do you um, say that? Because of just the general mentality of the way that he approaches practice. I think if he's there, he's there. If he's, if he's not going to practice, I think he's doing the Zach Martin not showing up and just saying, I'll take the fines and you're going to, you know, fix it on the back end. Uh, but the one that was a little bit of a surprise was... Micah Parsons. Mm. Micah Parsons was not in attendance on Tuesday, and he's been doing this individual training the last two off seasons where he allows people to punch him in his xiphoid process, yeah. and he goes and messes with sumo wrestlers and everything else that he does. Uh, but last year, he showed up when OTA started. He missed the voluntary portion of the wor- of the uh, off season, but when OTA started and the whole team got together and they were working with the coaching staff, he was there. He is not there this week. And so he's decided that he will continue his own individual training for another week. And he tells Michael Gelkin from the Dallas Morning News, yeah, I'll be up there next week. Don't worry. I'll take care of things. I'll be there next week. He says, I know. He's right down the street training. He is. But there's a difference between being right down the street training and being in the building with, especially to me, here's the thing. If your message was at the end of the season, I'm the leader. We don't have enough guys who are locked in. We're not doing this and that. Why are you not there setting the example for this group the first time the team gets together? That to me is important. And I know sometimes there are a lot of people who get annoyed with Micah. I know there are other people who adore Micah and think we're we're picking on him or taking shots. This is just flat out if, if this was Micah, if it was Dak, if it was anybody. If your message at the end of the season was about leadership and it being your team and all these things you need to fix, then when the team first gets together, you need to be there and you need to show them what the standard is and what they need to expect. And he's not there. So I think that's disappointing. He says he'll be there next week. He told Michael Gelkin, I know I'm putting in the work. It more bothers me that people would think that I'm not doing everything I imagined possible to be the best player I can be to help win a championship. Yeah. And I totally agree with Micah. On that, I know that would maybe surprise some people after a report a few months ago or weeks, whatever it was. Um, I have zero question that Micah Parsons is doing everything in his power to become better and add in the offseason. I do agree with you. If that if he's trying to take on that responsibility, if he's trying to wear that crown of leader of the defense, Dak Prescott on the other side, you should be there on day one. Like what? You, uh, there's an you can't do jujitsu kicks, you know, inside the Ford Center at the Star. You need your you need your few more days of martial arts training. Makes me wonder if there's a little bit of CD Lamb type motivation for staying away a little bit. That would make more sense to me. That that would make sense. But he did say he said it's you know the playoff loss hurts. I'm still upset. He goes, I'm not worried about no money, no nothing. That failure sits deep more than anything else. So he claims that not about contract at all. He's worried more about just taking care of himself and that he'll be here next week. It's just to me, you should be there now. Because like you say, you can, those jujitsu kicks or whatever else you're doing, the individual training, Dak Prescott does the individual training too. CD Lamb, when he's not got a contract issue, does the individual training Everyone too. Everyone does. They do it on top of, they show up to OTAs and then they still do that stuff. And you can do it too. It just, it sends, it, I think it sends the wrong message of drawing this this line or, or putting this out there of just, I do things my way. I don't do things here within the building with the team and with the guys. Especially with Zimmer. 
Yeah. Brand new scheme, brand new coordinator. Yeah, and a guy, a guy who, you know, you would think you'd want to get in there and start working on his budget. Because this is right now what it's all about. This is about install, and this is about picking up what you're doing schematically and getting those sorts of things in order. This isn't competition period. This isn't Oxnard where you're competing for a depth chart spot. This is the stuff that he should be present for. What did Zimmer have to say while I was out? Zimmer had a lot that was really interesting. In fact, I'm going to, Chris, I may have you pull this cut and we'll play it during Below the Belt just because I want Sean to react to it as well. There was a... How did Ryan get Mike Zimmer up so quick? He he knows what we do, I man. I was very depressed walking in when I was asking Ryan about his future. So what's next after graduation? And he's like, I'm applying, you know, trying to. And I was like, well, what about 1080 downstairs? <laughs> Um, you know, what, what about, what about this radio gig and what about, how can we make you grow here? And he's like, I'm a TV star, man. That is what he is. Hey, I like him. And he laid out for you the whole, at your, at your house, he laid out the whole plan of like, yeah, this is the job that I want to do. And this is, I mean, ultimately that's where it's heading. So we're just going to have to, who's going to replace him. Who has he groomed? Because that poor person is going to be Carter, I guess. Carter's just going to work a, a mega shift. No, 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 no. Y'all are boys. Y'all were talking at the elevator the other day. No, I think I'd rather lose the stream numbers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Ryan was telling me, yeah, it's uh, it's it's gonna happen at some point. It's inevitable. Austin, um, he's he's leaving me. He's gonna leave the nest. Yeah, at some point, but hopefully, uh, hopefully not for a while. Let's uh, I don't know. Let's like. Uh, I wonder how much of my bonus check I would have to give him to try to keep him around a little bit. Write a piece, write a number on a piece of paper, Ryan, and just bring it in here, and, yeah. then, and then hand it to him. Write right. a number on a piece of paper per quarter. Yes. <laughs> yeah. not, not per month, <laughs> per quarter when we get the bonuses. Anyway, back to the boys. So, uh, yeah, Zimmer had talked about, you know, how I they... have a number in mind. I have a number in mind. So write one down. It's three figures. <laughs> <laughs> he talked about, Zimmer talked about how he planned on using Micah and basically said, look, yeah, the, the double A gap pressure, which is those, you know, on the either side of the center between the guards, those are the A gaps that... He's known for sending pressure there. And he said, well, look, here's the thing. If you've got Micah Parsons standing in the A-gap showing blitz, who's the center going to go to? The center's going to reach for Micah. And so you're, you're not going to necessarily get the matchup that you want if you're sending him every time. So he talked about disguising things, having Micah do some stuff where he's dropping in coverage occasionally, just basically trying to change things up so that they're being a, that they're able to take advantage of Micah's skill set as often as possible. But... It was interesting. He had mentioned, I don't think it was a shot at Dan Quinn, but it was just a, a straight assessment of what he had seen from the Cowboys on tape, which he said, you know, when you watch the games that the Cowboys played poorly on defense last year, he said, I think a lot of times it was games where the opponent had a plan to take Micah out of the game to neutralize him. And there wasn't a response to that. Hmm. And again, I don't think he was being critical. He was very gentle in the way he tried to say it. But I think he was just trying to say, I, we've got to be better about having something ready for him when teams just neutralize him. We can't just say, well, he's taken out for the day. We'll we'll get contributions from other people. Yeah. We've got to figure out a way to, to get him free. He also said he wanted to work down on the field, not up in the booth, so he can correct the mistakes right there with the player. Yeah, and he would not. Uh, he, he weighed in on the Mozzie Smith weight issue. Weigh in. See what I did there? Yeah. Uh, said that Mozzie right now, he said... Mozzie tells me he's at 305. So he was at 325 when he got drafted last year, fell below 300 pounds during the season, which is not what you want from a guy who's supposed to be a run stuffer. Uh, but said he's up to 305, and Zimmer said, yeah, I've got to wait in mind for him, but I'm I'm not going to tell you guys. That's why he got rid of uh, all those sweatshirts in that storage locker. He didn't need them exactly. anymore. Exactly, yeah. It was, it was too thin. SodaWeightLoss.com. That's exactly <laughs> what they did. You know? So, but it's, Mozzie Smith is not officially affiliated with SodaWeightLoss no. or SodaWeightLoss.com. But Soda Weight Loss is affiliated with the Dallas Cowboys. Bam! Boom! So here's the thing, though, is that it's, it's interesting when you hear Zimmer clearly thinks they did things. There, there wasn't, things weren't always done the right way last year. And obviously everybody has their own thoughts and their own perspectives, but he is going to be a lot more about disguising what they do in coverage uh, it was interesting. He did say, hey, I know you guys have gotten used to a lot of turnovers. You may not see the 12 interception season from Diggs anymore. Mm. Where he's like, I'm more focused on 
preventing touchdowns and creating negative plays, not necessarily taking the ball away and turning the field around. Mm. And so, I mean, there was a lot of interesting, interesting stuff in there that he had to say where, you know, he talked to I love this guy mostly at the uh, <laughs> Mosley and Werder at the Doomsday Podcast. And then he spoke with Dallas Media, obviously out at uh, the assistant coach availability day. But he is, it's easy to look at Zimmer, I think, and say, well, he's 67 years old. The game has passed him by. It's like, that's your, your, just pigeonholing because of what he is in terms of his age. That's somebody who's consistently been on the forefront of trying to pressure the way that offenses are changing. One more note from Micah Parsons uh, as he did not show up to day one as he's training down the street. He said, Mike McCarthy and I talked multiple times this offseason about how we can create more self-discipline. How can we eliminate the penalties? How can we create a better environment to be better? It starts with me. That's why I've been putting so much into that. You've got to learn how to lead. You have to learn almost everything in life. I realized I need to increase my spirit. So when others are down, my spirit rises. And you would think, you would think to follow up on all of that and deliver that you would be there for day one. Now, is it the end of the world? Can Micah Parsons still be the leader of the Cowboys defense and the second uh, biggest leader on the team? Of course he can. Hey, just because you missed day one doesn't mean you cannot be the leader. It just would have made some common sense to show up for the first day when you're talking like that and creating more self-discipline, setting the tone early on. Yeah, I just have a I have a problem with the the insinuation or the suggestion that I need to separate myself because I just care so much. Like it hurts to even be around it. And, and as RJ would tell you. If you got to tell everyone how much you care, he would use an F word in that, um, and it would rhyme with Maud. Oh yeah, like Harold and Maud. Yeah, yeah. No. I couldn't. Um, you don't want to. You don't want to put your put that exact word out there. No, it was, really, it was fraud. <laughs> now it's fraud. It's just really strong, really strong word. He was not. I don't think he'd say Mike is a fraud. He would say it's fraudulent. Like people with religion, they got to tell you. How much and that, you know, he would call out Josh Hamilton. He'd call out CJ Wilson with some of those things in the past and uh, had a decent hit rate. And he's like, if I got to keep telling you how much of a leader I am and I'm this and I'm that, Choppy would roll his eyes at that. Yeah. I mean, Dak doesn't generally tell us that he's this leader on the team. Everybody yeah. else does. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and that's the thing that generally, I think when you hear people talk about the defensive side of the ball, and they start talking about leadership in the past. They've talked about Demarcus Lawrence. They've talked about Sean Lee. Um, you know, even at times they'll talk about Diggs and the tone that he sets. Donovan Wilson has gotten that kind of talk. J. Ron Curse. Um, Micah, uh, Micah doesn't have to be a leader, in my opinion. Maybe he feels like he does. Maybe the Cowboys feel like he has to. I don't think that's a prerequisite for the position he plays. Quarterback it is. You have to be. You've got to be the field general. You're commanding a group of players that's not what Mike is doing. So to me, he doesn't have to be the leader on defense, but yeah. if he wants to embrace it, you need to be there on May 21st. And look, for those that get a little bit mad on the Franklin LaFranco injury attorney text line or tweet, you're being too hard, you're being too harsh. When it comes to people like Micah Parsons and Luka Doncic, my response is always tough, tough. It's going to be like I am with my son. I expect more of you. Uh, you've been taught this. You're supposed to be this. So just... I, I don't have any. I don't have any sympathy for it. There's going to be a higher expectation. It may be a little bit of an unfair standard. I, I don't care. Uh, I was not going to give Luka Doncic an injury pass if they lost to Oklahoma City. He was fine and fine when he has the basketball in his hands. So I was already texting Tolos behind the scenes. No injury pass, not happening. And I'm not going to give it for Micah Parsons either. You're supposed to be Lawrence Taylor. Uh, you're you're on an underachieving football team. Uh, there's some issues with some people behind the scenes. Uh, not major, major, major. Well, I don't know. That was a that was months ago. Um, so <laughs> Are you I'm, trying to start it back up you, again? You just get held to a higher standard, at least for me. That's just the way it is. Tough. Yeah. No. And I, I think that which I'm sure keeps him up at night. But I mean, <laughs> like, if he's if he's if he wants that mantle, then that's the standard that you're going to be held to publicly too. And that's the thing that that you have to do. And so he's got he's got to expect that that comes with it.